To Society Girls Saves the World once again here on the Desi Movies dot biz podcast. Today's film that we are going to be talking about is a film from way back in 1976, April 1976, and it is a time of bitter sweet memories. <laughs> जानो कपटी इज द फिल्म दैट वी आर गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड इट स्टार्स आसिया इकबाल हसन मुनवर जरीफ इन द टाइटल रोल अनीटा सबा नजमा महबूब मुनवर सईद सायका जग्गी मलिक ताहिया बरकत खालिद सलीम मोटा एंड चुन चुन द फिल्म इज डायरेक्टेड बाय नसीम हैदर शाह एंड दोज ऑफ यू हु आर इंटरेस्टेड देर इज ए कॉपी ऑफ द फिल्म अप ऑन यूट्यूब बट हैविंग सेड दैट द यूट्यूब वर्जन इज अबाउट सेवनटीन मिनट्स शॉर्टर दैन द वर्जन दैट यू विल फाइंड ऑन द official or shall we say unofficial vcd release in pakistan the reason why this film janu kapatti from 1976 brings back some bitter sweet memories is because number one the film is absolutely incredible it's a one of a kind film that has never been made before and never since and for that reason alone it happens to be one of the most memorable films ever to come out of pakistan the other reason that is much more bitter uh, as far as memories are concerned is that the film was released in april 1976 the week that munawar zarif who was the absolute star of this film sadly met his demise and uh, its box office results were therefore met with considerable disappointment as the public were absolutely shocked at the death of their beloved superstar and the film suffered consequently so what is janu kapati about in the title role of course as i mentioned is munawar zarif and the fascinating aspect of the film is that he is playing a woman a natural born woman not a man dressed as a woman but as a biological woman and that alone is absolutely fascinating the film introduces us to a gorgeous and feisty kapati uh, which is the word for feisty jano frittering her youth away being gawped at and proposed to by her many swooning admirers a man magnet she is constantly surrounded by suitors who grapple with one another to grab her attention husbands are ready to abandon their wives for a new life with jano some call her cleopatra's aunt such is her beauty and regal manner as she romps around the village with her girls in complete abandon she is the girl every man craves and every woman wants to be they call her kapati because of her fiery spirit that invokes equal amounts of fear and lust a kapati is known to have a bite far worse than her bark but if you look it up on the internet it suggests a nasty mean and angry person our janu often fits that description quite perfectly There is also a subplot involving Jano's elder sister who has a monster of a husband who is bent on extracting as much money from his wife as possible even threatening to offer her as a prize at his next gambling session <laughs> जी 
However, this horrid Munawar Saeed has a fine upstanding younger brother whose sympathies lie with his sister in law Saba. Iqbal is romancing the town's other sought after beauty, Asya, the village Chaudhry's daughter, in his spare time. The village Chaudhry is a benign man eager to help his workers to reap the rewards for the benefit of the community. Unknown to him, there is a snake amidst his workforce intent on ripping him off to win Asya as the ultimate prize, aka Sone Kichiriya. Jano lives in a quiet town where the only action is when frenemy Asya's gang confronts her gang and breaks out into an impromptu song and dance. Amidst the hilarity with Munawar Zarif turning on his excellent drag performance during the film's opening sequences, there is sobering news as well. The audience learns that the adorable and vivacious, read bubbly, Janu suffers from a terrible medical ailment for which she's been having injections in the bum. Things have gotten out of hand and she's unlikely to survive without significant surgery very soon. Janu suffers crippling headaches when her beer strikes, leaving her no choice, surgery or death. Desperate for gambling money, Saeed assaults Janu, after which she suffers a horrific attack on her sides and ends up on the operating table. It's a very delicate operation indeed, but with the surgeon's diligence and expertise and Allah's blessing, Janu survives miraculously but with one slight complication. The gorgeous bombshell that was Janu of before is now a handsome young man. But the entire community appears delighted that Janu is now known as Johnny, the man. Doctor Ji, Janu will die. Janu will die. I will tell you, my mother is sad. The operation is done, baby. I will hear you as a big deal. What will you hear from me? I will not hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But there remains another slight problem, however. The man they have created is a tad effeminate, or in Pakistani lingo, feminish and relatively uninterested and almost intimidated by women. Hence, the medical and psychological staff decide to have him corrected by having the seductress Anita work her charms on Jani. After rigorous analysis, the doctors and psychologists determine the way forward and introduce the sultry Anita to Jani. With the help of some seductive song numbers and dances, Anita slowly but surely manages to work her intoxicating magic on Jani. And it's not long before Janu is transformed into a full-blooded CIS man with eyes only for women. As Jani grows more and more masculine, his personality changes likewise. While Jani was a big-hearted, righteous woman, full of mischievous fun and frolic, Jani is a bit of a selfish git. When asked by an old family associate for assistance to help his ailing mother and sister, he refuses outright to associate with his village idiot family. A desperate mother and daughter trek off to the city to look for Jani and try to remind him of their existence and beg for help. 
It doesn't take them long to find Johnny in the arms of girlfriend Anita, languishing in a drunken stupor. The moment he realizes his mother and beloved Baji stand in front of him, he turns full circle, seething for revenge from those who have dared to cause his family any hardship at all. As he storms off with his mother and Baji back to the village, Anita urges him to stop, but he scoffs at her calling her a Vileti Chok whatever that might be. Meanwhile, back in the village, the evil Munawar Saeed and his nasty accomplice make plans. But Jani arrives, letting everyone know he is not a former woman-turned-man to be messed with. The conniving evil duo repents, but only for a moment. There are some stirring fight and stunt scenes and reasonably well-executed twist to round things up. The film is tailored to suit the considerable skills of Munawar Zarif as a drag artist doing his typical Punjabi village bell to perfection. The film's first half features Zarif in his pomp as Jano, the village bombshell who is every man's dream, while the second follows his transformation into a man. His values are shaken as he finds his feet in his new found masculine self, but he soon finds himself back on track. Iqbal Hassan is his usual dependable and earnest, robust self as the younger brother of the lecherous drunkard Munawar Saeed. Saeed is married to Saba, Jano's elder sister, so they're all related. Saba and Munawar Saeed are impressive while Asia was at the top of her game in the mid-70s. Anita has a decent role, but unfortunately the tunes and the dances for her in this movie are not her strongest. Her talents were thus criminally wasted. The music by Nazir Ali fails to fire with no memorable numbers at all. John No Kapati is a weird and wonderful delight, even if it leaves you a tiny little bit frustrated as it fritters out towards its climax. The film starts with the most seriously insane storyline, goes completely nuts before losing steam and ends up as typical formula. After the halfway mark and Munawar Zarif's sex change surgery, the film follows an intriguing path, but then it falters following a familiar formula, leaving a viewer feeling a slight letdown as a result. The film displays the potential to take its ground-breaking storyline to a suitably ridiculous conclusion, but ends up copping out and falls short of the delicious standards it promised to set. The movie completely disconnects from the entire Janu Kapati theme and is changed into a regular and wholly non-subversive and safe formula effort. This is where Janu Kapati fails, having promised so much. One of the strangest aspects of the film were the scenes as the news of Jano's transformation from female to male spreads. People of all kinds express their joy and delight that she should have become a man rather than the woman that she was. There are a couple of aspects of Janu Kapati which make it a remarkable film from any angle or aspect that you wish to look upon it. Firstly, it is a film that features a sex change operation, which is probably a first for this region, meaning South Asia, including Bollywood and perhaps Asia itself. The film is, of course, from 1976, and it is not often that you get a mainstream film that is uh, built around such a an odd and sensitive issue slash topic of uh, gender changes and uh, it is also remarkable for the way in which it tackles this issue in in a completely non-sexual way it just treats the issue as an ailment of a woman and in order to save her life, they have to perform an operation, and somehow or the other, the operation is successful, but the uh, person is rendered from being a female to a male. And that is looked upon as being a mere insignificant side effect. Which brings us to the second most remarkable aspect of the film, the, the way in which the change of sex is looked upon by the public at large in a very positive light. Um, Chachi! 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 Chachi!
The female to male change is seen as being a little bit like a miracle in that a family that was struggling to make ends meet and had to burden a female, another female on its shoulders without male support was destined for misery. And after this operation and this change of sex, perhaps this family's fortunes are changing and it will bring them luck and much better fortune and of course strength in the form of a male and everyone seems to be delighted when it is announced that Janu is no more and has been replaced by a man by the name of Jani and I find that really very strange but then you think of the context of the situation and that being a society where boys are often looked upon as a blessing and girls very frequently viewed as a curse, as a burden which has to be borne by the family upon which they are born into. Does that make any sense? If it doesn't, well, and if it does, I think you know exactly what I'm speaking about. Memorable moments include the medical experts discussing the sexual reorientation or even correction therapy of Jano. It shows that just a few months before General Ziaul Haq dawned on the country, people were experimenting with some wild and wonderful, if equally loopy and whimsical ideas in cinema, and only good could have come out of such creative liberty. Janu Kapati may have missed the bull's eye, but it's a trailblazer in many ways, and the initial hour and a half are Lollywood at its most insanely brilliant. Janu Kapati may be uneven and otherwise flawed, but it's also a landmark film, a rough, raw diamond. The film promised at one stage to be the most provocative film in Pakistani cinema history, but then opted to play safe and suffers for it tellingly. Munawar Zarif's tragic demise just six days into the film's release was a fatal blow to Janu Kapati's box office chances. Audiences found watching a movie featuring Zarif cringing in agony and ending up in hospital was just too much to suffer. Meanwhile, an upcoming film, Anjam, started to exploit the actor's untimely death, touting itself as Munawar Zarif's last complete colour film. That film didn't fare too well either. And it was a while before audiences recovered from the shock of losing their beloved actor. Munawar Zarif's loss to Pakistani cinema was immense. And that brings us to the end of our little discussion of Janu Kapati, a film that I reckon anyone who's got any interest in Pakistani cinema simply cannot afford to miss it. Shines a light on the drag culture that is part of Pakistani culture and entertainment and continues to be, despite the fact that many people especially those on the right wing are rather ashamed of this kind of thing and would prefer to pretend that it doesn't exist at all. As mentioned, the film is available on YouTube, but also irritatingly among the 17 minutes that they have managed to somehow exclude from their version are among the more interesting parts of the film as well. So until next time, please stay safe and take care. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.